Hello and welcome to the 11th episode of the Croydon Constitutionist Pubcast. Of course, another virtual pubcast in lockdown at the moment. And a special one because we celebrate two years on the 7th of May of the Croydon Constitutionists. Dan, um, how are you finding the lockdown? And most importantly, what are you drinking in this virtual pub? Well, in this virtual pub where I where I look out of my uh, my study window, I see it's it's very nice outside, and I uh, I wish I was in a in a, a proper pub's beer garden. Uh, hopefully, that will be uh, allowed in a few weeks' time. Uh, but at the moment, in in lieu of that, I am uh, drinking a uh, a bottle of Banks's Amber Ale, a uh, refreshing drink from the Black Country. Fantastic! I am on some Carling Lager. I won't pretend this is the best drink I've ever had. I will, however, say it is the um, best one to use up the dregs of in the fridge. Um, so, um, well, it's two years since we've been around and, and want to talk a bit about our last year. So um, in this last year, we've seen a move away from Brexit and Brexit actually get delivered, uh, although we're still waiting for that tricky transition period. And we've seen a rather uh, major general election. But of course, the Croydon constitutionists haven't haven't uh, held on our uh, still we've done lots of things so one of the big things we started doing this year was interviewing people um local politicians and activists and some further afield uh dan what were some of your highlights from the people we interviewed uh well there's there's many but um a couple that i'd like to to pick out were um the the interview that we did with peter sonex who eventually was the brexit party candidate in the general election for croydon central uh, although he was originally selected for croydon south before the uh, brexit party stood down uh, a number of candidates uh, that was interesting because uh, yes obviously he's standing for parliament therefore he's a politician as it were but de facto but in fact he'd, he'd never been involved in in party politics or indeed politics at all until until last year so it was refreshing to hear from him and um what he thought about party politics and uh, how he felt that democracy was being betrayed and it, it was more an issue of the uh, the politicians politicians not trusting the people and uh, democracy as i say being betrayed so that was a that was an interesting interview that uh, that that he wrote up that for the uh, for the website uh, but also and you, and you mentioned some slightly further afield politicians uh, we also uh, had an interview that we put on the uh, on the website from uh, a gentleman called Tam Laird who is the the leader of the Scottish Libertarian Party uh, a small party but um but a growing party and, and, and an interesting party because um, they're, they're a separate party to the UK Libertarian Party, and obviously they share many of the many of the ideals. But crucially, they uh, they believe in Scottish independence as well as Brexit and as well as obviously small small government. So it was uh, it was refreshing to as well to, to to read what he had to say because um, so often we think that Scotland is uh, a place where everybody believes in big government and uh, if you believe the press everybody wants to be uh, part of the EU. So it was uh, it was good to hear from him and uh, yeah he's certainly uh, quite uh, robust in some of his uh, comments on, on that are on our uh, in the article on the website and um, yeah he, he doesn't uh, hold uh, Nicola Sturgeon in uh, very high regard. So so um, uh, anyone who's in that position is uh, all right by me, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Both those well worth a read. Uh, for myself, I, I thought uh, we started off with uh, Chris Mendes um, from the Foundation Party and the Foundation Party leader. We've interviewed uh, others from the party as well. Uh, Chris, many of you will know, he was the Croydon South lead in the Brexit campaign uh, and uh, put a huge amount of work there. Uh, was around in UKIP for a while and then set up his own party with a, a number of people from from different areas. They've got a few councillors, fairly locally based in Kent, although they do have a councillor in Essex, I think. Um, really interesting to hear what it's like to set up a party and, and what they've run. And that's that's well worth the read from him there. Also, uh, Chris Philp MP. So my local MP, one of the MPs for Croydon. Um, he's a, a now a minister and a, a rising star in the Conservative Party. Nice to have an MP at the time of an election actually write uh, for us or, or write an in, uh, interview with us. Um, really, you know, good to get that. Uh, Chris is a fairly local lad. He grew up in West Wickham, so some interesting stuff there. Uh, he also had his first campaign against Glenda Jackson, the um, uh, Hampstead and Kilburn MP at the time and uh, uh, the famous actress. So we, we, we talk a bit about that. So, yeah, really uh, good, good, uh, 
good sets of interviews loads of others on there well worth having a look lots of different parties um and yeah for, for interest to you but it wasn't just interviews uh in writing we done we we also in our podcast started moving to interviews this year and a number of people we spoke about so dan i don't know any guests you particularly enjoyed speaking to yeah so the, the, there was many really but um there, was a, there were a couple of podcasts that we did uh, where we had we had two guests. We had uh, Hung Wei Chia of the uh, the local branch of UKIP, and we had we had Sean Finch from the uh, the, the Libertarian Party, um, and that was good because we had them uh, chatting amongst themselves as to the different positions in terms of how libertarian they are. So obviously, the Libertarian Party is libertarian, in, as the name suggests, but also uh, UKIP, according to its constitution, is a is a libertarian party. Uh, and it was interesting to to hear them discuss the the differences in emphasis that they they have between them. Uh, although it was also good to see that there's a there's a lot of shared shared positions really. Um, and they also carried on with a, a second podcast uh, that we published later, uh, in which they discussed the future of libertarianism uh, and democracy in this country. Um, some things to worry about, but um, but also good to see that there are people out there. Uh, from slightly different political persuasions, perhaps, but uh, who certainly have our uh, our country's liberty uh, at the fore of their mind. No, absolutely. That was a, a good evening uh, where where the, uh, Dan Hongwei and Sean came round to my house to record this. This is uh, something that seems like a, a crazy thought in modern times, but but believe you me, we could once do that. Um, a couple of a couple of ones I really enjoyed. So the, our podcasts um, became more dynamic this year with some music, um, fantastic music from Tim Juice, uh, a local uh, mus- musician, um, a avid. Uh, Brexiteer, uh, we interviewed with him. Uh, really interesting about what got him to believe in in our need to leave the EU, and that dates back many years. Um, and talking about what it's like in the arts world being a, a Brexiteer, so interesting stuff there. And of course, we interviewed David Curtin, uh, the GLA member, who's uh, spoke at a couple of our events, um, who's also had a recent interview with. Really. Um, David's a very happy warrior. He's running as an independent candidate for mayor of London um, uh, in the postponed, but hopefully now next year uh, uh, campaign. So another elected member, uh, really good conversation with him about what's going on at the moment and and where he sees the country going and indeed his new mayoral campaign. Um, but it wasn't all local in London. We, we took on a bit of an international theme this year. Um, now, I, I was tempted to say that the Scottish interview was an international one, but that's maybe a, a bit harsh. But we, we spoke to quite a few um, uh, people further abroad and, and about further themes. So firstly, I undertook the uh, massive sacrifice, listeners, and, you know, I, I'm i there for you on this, of travelling to Australia and writing about um, my experience with politics there, visiting some parliaments, uh, quite an interesting um take on Australian politics. I shouldn't say that about my own article, but if, you know, if you're interested in politics further, I feel worth a read. We interviewed Frederick Dominicus, the leader of Parti de Vernunft, the Party of Reason or the German Libertarians. Uh, interesting take on German uh, stuff there. An interview with Nimit Shodia. Uh, he's a UK based um, Indian and from as in he's from India and talks a bit about Indian politics. We, of course, appeared in the uh, Canada's newspaper of record, the Globe and Mail, for one of our drinks. And we spoke to Mel McDermott about politics in Ireland. Dan, through all of those, uh, any thoughts, anything that leaps out of you that we done? Yeah, I mean, I think obviously uh, when we were, uh, many of us were were interviewed by the uh, the Canadian press. That was uh, that was interesting that they would. Uh, see fit to, to visit Croydon and uh, discuss matters with us uh, over a few drinks that was uh, always uh, always a pleasure um but yeah good to, good to hear from um from from Frederick in uh, in Germany uh to hear to hear how libertarianism in in Germany is is uh, is going um clearly they are uh, there's, there's issues there in terms of uh, there's been you know far, far too much immigration um but interesting to see how they are against the EU in its current form, but they are generally in favour of, of open borders and and things like that. But they uh that they're not keen on the on the current setup. So um, it's good to take a to, to see a German take on that and uh, and to note that they are quite jealous of us and with our position that we are we have Brexiting. So um, 
yeah good good to uh good to speak to uh to frederick i've always said of course it's uh calgary new york london paris croydon those are the key places and the the canadian newspapers know it all too well um Apart from speaking around the world, there were some more local events we organised. So um, two big events uh, this past year. There should have been more. But uh, first of all, the Freedom of Speech, Just What Will You Say event uh, in Croydon back in September in the um, Green Dragon Pub. And David Curtin and Harry Fon uh, both spoke at that. Um, Harry from the Taxpayers Alliance, who we've done a lot of work with. Street stalls, talking about the Town Hall Rich List. Um, he spoke about the NHS on the evening and, and how we're not necessarily allowed to talk about that. Amazingly prescient at the time. Sean Finch again and Izzy Montague, uh, the uh, local Croydon mother who's appeared on the telly a few times talking about some of the, uh, frankly, suppression of parental rights she's seen in Croydon schools. Uh, we had a My Top and Worth event. We had eight speakers. Anyone could turn up, speak for five minutes uh, on a subject close to their heart. A really good turnout. Um, some interesting people we didn't expect uh, and and just a, a great chance to give you an opportunity to air your views on something that you're passionate about. And we were due to have the BBC uh, event uh, talking about the future of the BBC, but unfortunately that was postponed due to the virus. But uh, we'll be having that again in September. Dan, any thoughts on those events? Anything you, you really remember? Uh, well, drinks were had at all events, so uh, as to what I remember is another matter, <laughs> uh, but but a suitable thing to say for a podcast. Um, but yeah, no, it, it was great to have the, the, the two sort of free speech related events, uh, one where we had, um, I won't quite say professional speakers, but um, people that are, are somewhat more used to doing that. But it was it was great to have an event where people could come along and speak about something that they, they they feel passionate about and to you know they were asked a few questions about it but in a you know they were challenged on issues but but not you know not like you would uh, you would get if you were uh, in front of the the, uh, the channel 4 uh, reporters um, so yeah that was good to give people an opportunity to speak because so often um, people don't get the opportunity to speak uh, anymore. Um, we've seen, and okay, these people weren't necessarily university students, but you see the sort of thing that's happening at universities where free speech, free speech should be a, you know, a, a real thing there to uh, to open people's minds and to be to be challenged on some of the their uh, the things they thought before they went to university. But uh, but obviously that's that's no longer the case with the with the cancellation culture. Uh, so it was good to have people come along and, and you know, they, they were challenged on issues, but there was a, in a respectful uh, atmosphere. So, yeah, I'd say that was good. Uh, disappointing, obviously, not to have the uh, the BBC forum on the on the future of the BBC. But we will we will reschedule that uh, just as soon as we are uh, out of the current crisis. The yeah, that's right. The, the the my tuppence worth event. Just uh, one thing I'd say on that. I mean, I'm I'm sure we'll be holding another one of them once we're eventually able to all meet up again. Um, and it's a great opportunity if you're you're tempted to do some public speaking or you haven't done too much, you want to try it out. It's five minutes. It's not that long. Um, I, I suspect we use a very similar format. You can talk about anything you want that's that's uh, sort of close to your heart. Um, and and you know make use of that um uh if you're a seasoned speaker come and speak if you're a new speaker come and speak it's it's there and it's free for you to use that and it was really nice uh i certainly felt really happy we were able to put something like that on well um that's all of a sort of some of the big things but that's not all we've been doing so um uh We've had a few writers for us, Phil and Josh. Phil talking about Sutton, Josh talking about Liberty and Sutton Council, some of the issues there, Liberty and some of the issues, uh, how we get out of the COVID-19 problems from Josh. So really interesting. I've been interviewed quite a lot of times by Sputnik Radio. Um, so I would say we're funded by the Russians, but I'm yet to receive payment. Um, it's it was great to speak to them. Really nice to get a chance to put my views across and uh, to air that with a wider audience. We don't get a lot of coverage in the press for anything that's a vaguely sort of classical liberal libertarian pro-Brexit view anymore, um, but they give us that opportunity. Uh, we, we had lots of opportunities to highlight problems at Croydon Council, partly with the Taxpayers Alliance, but, but some of our own work looking at uh, the spending at the council, looking at the amount of money they, they frankly throw away. Um, the council this past year or so uh, invested in the Croydon Park Hotel um, 
leasehold uh, for the land and in the colonnade shopping center for the land uh, they got very cheap loans they are due to make money for services from that and that's a brilliant strategy providing there's not a global pandemic that kills off the tourist industry or shopping centers um, so as long as we don't have that Croydon will be fine and there are many many other articles on there so uh, Dan any thoughts lasting thoughts or ending thoughts for our past year and what we might be doing next yeah, I mean, I think we've we've had a, a successful year. Um, really, sort of raised the profile of the uh, of the organisation uh, both locally uh, by working with other parties such as the Taxpayers Alliance um, and, and holding events. But um, it, it's been refreshing to uh, to get some uh, more international uh, recognition um, with the with the local media being basically non-existent um, and with the uh, the BBC and the the, the national media um, not being too interested in, in in Croydon or indeed as you say in uh, classical liberalism it's been good to uh, to talk with uh, with the press from from further afield um, yeah I think for the for the future hopefully you know uh, COVID-19 permitting uh, we'll certainly be doing some more street stalls with the TPA now that the uh, the latest rich list has come out uh, but yeah really looking forward to uh, to getting back out there and and working with the organizations and, and holding events and uh, hopefully when the pubs reopen we'll be able to have another another levers of, uh, of Croydon drinks we've um, we've been able to have a couple of virtual drinks uh, with the uh, the wonders of modern technology, but it would uh, it would certainly be good to get back into a, a, a pub environment and uh, actually see people uh, in the flesh, as it were. Absolutely. So uh, with that, thanks uh, all for your time. Keep following us. If you want to write for us, get in touch. Um, follow us on social media. Uh, links will be uh, on our website. And uh, Dan, your turn to get around in. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>